You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Challenge us at Wexford Insurances, 0818 31 30 30. I'm joined now by Sabina Rosler from Wells House in Gorry, which is due to open shortly as a tourist attraction. Sabina, start off by giving me some information about yourself, please. Well, my association with the house started about 16 years ago um, when myself and Oli um, got together and subsequently married. I came in to Wells and opened up the leisure complex. I know that the house closed in 2006. Why was that? My father-in-law died in 2006 and um, the ha- the land and the house and the farm was left to my mother-in-law and it subsequently closed then. It kind of went into a time warp until decisions were made as to what was going to happen with the house and grounds. The ownership of the house uh, was taken over by yourselves about 16 months ago. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, Oli's mum decided to um, that the job was too big and the task was too big to maintain the house and gardens. So she signed it over to Oli and uh, we knew then straight away that we had to open up the house and in order to be able to maintain it and keep it going. So you made a decision at that stage to open it as a tourist attraction. What was the first step you took from there? Once we decided that we were going to open it, we looked at it. It's a, it's a big area and it had huge possibilities and we needed to decide, well, what road were we going to take? So our decision was to do a feasibility study and um, look at it uh, in the overall context and what it had to offer and make our decisions from there as to what we were going to do. Just to put some perspective on it, tell me a little bit about the house, please. The house was bought by the Right Honourable Robert Doyne around the 1700s. He would have been um, one of the highest judges in Ireland at the time. And he didn't live in the house, but it had at that stage about 6,000 acres and it would have been farmed by tenants. Um, Several years later, I think it was his grandson's grandson, decided then to farm. Um, And he lived in Wells House and he farmed about 600 acres around it. And it stayed in the Doyne family for 260 years. And then my father-in-law, Gerhard Rosler, bought it um, early 1960s, I think 1964. He had a textile factory in Enniscorthy and fell in love with the house and bought it. The decision was made by yourselves, as you say, 16 months ago to turn into a tourist attraction and you approached Wexford Local Development. How supportive were they? Oh, Wexford Local Development were great. We support, asked them first if, if we could do a feasibility study and did the relevant application forms and that was granted and it was 75% funded, which was a great help to us. Once we did the feasibility study, We then went back to Wexford Local Development with the study and the business plan and did the application for um, funding from Wexford Local Development. Tell me a little bit about a feasibility study. What does it cover? A feasibility covers, it it looked at the whole area. It looked at the, the Wells House estate and took into consideration all the different things that you could do with it and what was really viable. Like, where were we going to start? What would be a good tourist offering? Like, what would families be looking for? What would people be looking for in a good tourist attraction? Um, We decided that we would go with the heritage, obviously because of the house, the gardens, and um, we were very fortunate to get the original plans of the house and the gardens, which gave us something to work with. We wanted to have it a family fun day, um, heritage, um, garden trails, um, all that. So you, you appeal to a broad age group of people. So once you had the feasibility study completed, it showed that the house could be turned into a viable business model. What was WLD's thoughts on it at that stage? WLD loved it, I think, from the very beginning. The North Wexford, the Gorey area, doesn't have a lot of heritage property. I, I don't think it has any besides um, Wells House. So for Wexford Local Development Board Falch and that this the house was a great attraction. The fact that we were o- wanting to open it up and make a tourist attraction out of it was also of great benefit. And from there, I suppose the next step was for you to go and get quotations to do the relevant works to be able to open the attractions that you wanted to open uh, around the house itself. So tell me a bit about the process from there. The process to putting the, together the application for Wexford Local Development, um, we got all the details that we needed. It was now to go ahead. If something was costing you 5,000, then you needed one quotation. If it was costing you up to 25,000, you needed three. And then after that, it had to go to e-tender. There was no problem in getting the quotations from the different suppliers. In the case of the Woodland Walk, you got three people who, three quotes who 
for pe- from people who would be able to do that type of work. The e-tender process was by far the most difficult. Why was that? The rules and regulations and just the way the e-tender process worked. Luckily in Loughnow, we had an architect on board at that stage and he handled all of that. Then the application for planning permission because we had to go for planning permission. Um, again, she's a listed building. She's of national importance. So we really couldn't do anything with her without first getting permission, even down to the restoration of the terrace. Even though we had the original drawings and the original plans, um, we had to get a heritage gardener. We had to get a conservation engineer. Um, I think we probably had every engineer on site that was ever invented. So there was lots of restrictions put on you in relation to doing any ancillary works to the site itself. Yes, we couldn't do anything without prior approval. Now that really, at the end of the day, suited us because we really did want to do an authentic restoration. So we, we were happy to comply. It was just the amount of paperwork and the amount of hoops that you had to jump through. Like they didn't make it easy. Now, Wexford County Council doubled over backwards. They were hugely helpful. And, you know, everybody was from Wexford Local Development to the council and the architects worked, the feasibility study, that all, everybody helped us all along the way. If we go back to WLD again for a second. So you completed the feasibility study, you got your quotations and you went back then to WLD for a grant to do the restoration works. What size was that grant that you applied for? We went for maximum grant funding. It was a big project. We decided we'd go for maximum. Um, maximum was 150,000. Was that approved at 150,000? It was approved at 150,000. And how easy was it for you to get your 150,000 in funding? That wasn't easy at all. But we've, at the end of the day, we got there. It was very difficult. We'd never expected that we wouldn't get the funding. When it turned out that the bank, um, that just things didn't work out with the bank, we had to look elsewhere for funding and I managed to get, get, to get the matched funding. So from a private source, that funding came? Yeah, the funding came from a private source. Tell me about the time frame then it took for you to get the funding, let's say, from WLD to match funding in place. We were to start in April and then because I hadn't got the funding in place, we were delayed by a month. Then I'm, I had the matched funding, went back to Wexford Local Development and they didn't have the contract because the Department of Arts, Heritage and Gwaeltacht needed to dot a few I's and cross a few T's just to make sure that everything was in order. Um, we've now got everything in place, we've signed the contracts and we've started work. You mentioned earlier that Wexford County Council were very supportive as well with the project. What input did they have? We had a meeting with Wexford County Council um, just to let them know what we were planning because everybody was able to see what we were trying to do. And I think once Wexford County Council knew that it was going to be a genuine restoration over a period of years, they were happy. How much support did you receive from Falch Ireland along the way? I got to know Falch Ireland then, made them aware of the project and got great help from them. They um, sent us over an animation company from England to help us with the tour of the house. Um, We started the research on the history of the house very early on. And um, then we had the history, we had the the photographs, we had the portraits, we had the plans, and we needed to put it together then. You mentioned that an animation consultant was brought in from the UK, from Fall Derland. What did that involve? They came over and um, she stayed with us. She had a look around the house um, and like Board Fall, she loved the house and um, then had a look at the history. And I have told her a little bit about what I wanted to do with the house. I had been around and had a look at some other heritage properties that were open to the public and the tours that were being provided. And I didn't like the don't sit down and the don't touch rules. And really, you came out of a tour and you wondered, well, you felt should nearly go back in again. So I decided that the tour for Wells House was to be completely different. It'll be very much hands-on. It'll be, um, you'll be able to go into the rooms, you'll be able to pick things up, you'll be able to read the poetry, you'll be able to see the paintings, you'll be able to look at the drawing. So it's very much hands-on. There's no no no-touch rules. So it's going to be a very interactive tour. Yes. So you're almost at a stage now where you're ready to open. What's the plan in terms of getting bodies and visitors in the door at that stage? Before the schools close now at the end of June, I want to get all the leaflets to the schools, um, everything to the hotels, have an open day for the uh, hotels, have an open day for the tourist offices, get all the leaflets out to the mobile homes, the caravan parks, all the tourist areas and to link in with the other tourist attractions in Wexford to be able to display their brochures in our visitor centre and vice versa. And what's the objective for the house, let's say, for the next three years? What do you want to achieve? The income that we generate is going to be put back into the house. In other words, we would hope to restore this phase. The project will be over several phases. The next one would be the restoration of the basement. So what we would hope is that people would come along, have a look, 
at the house. It's completely original inside, um, but it needs restoration. And the restoration will take place over a period of years. And each year that people come along, then they see parts of the gardens restored, parts of the house restored, and carry on from there. You also mentioned to me you'd like to introduce a craft village to the estate as well. Tell me a bit about that. Um, To the left-hand side of the house, we have two courtyards. Now, they were the self-catering chalets, and um, I hope to put a craft village into the courtyards. But I'd like it not to be just people selling goods. I'd like them to make, have wood turning, have um, a smithy, have the different uh, crafts being represented there so that people can go and see them being made like pottery or jewellery. And then they will be able to sell them as well. And in terms of visitor numbers, how many are you hoping for in the next 12 months? Well, we're hoping for 15,000 cars in the first year. A third of those will hopefully go to visit the house um, and take the tour of the house and uh, build it up then year by year. Uh, market Bus tours then for the following year because we would have the garden the gardens restored the terrace this year and then keep on because we have an arboretum. So it will take place over a period of years and build the business then to have the bus tours and foreign visitors. Well, Sabina, that sounds very exciting. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming in this morning and for telling us the story about Wells House. And I wish every success with its launch on the 1st of July. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick in association with Wexford Insurances. Think Wexford Insurances for your business insurance.